of this comic. Um, and Eliza, Emily, and Stella are all contributors to it. So there are eight, seven issues. The eighth is done, but not out yet. So they come out every month. And then um, every four are published into a volume. So that's what this is. Like these came out as single issues. And then they um, make them into a book. So like the gist is, it's about girls who turn into wear anthers when they get their periods. We really wanted to put together like a, a graphic novel or comic book that um, uh, one that Leah and I could work on together, um, and that uh, was creator own material, which we can talk about a little bit later, and that um, had a, like a strong, like young feminist point of view. Uh, but it was very much you know, inspired by a lot of the fourteen-year-olds I know. Um, and I uh, also was a big fan of the 1981 version of Cat People, <laughs> <laughs> which probably that one summer was on HBO, that heavily influenced me. Uh, so looking at the kind of like allegory of um, women who turn in to wild cats, and looking at culturally, we have like pop culture, there's a long tradition, right, of, of manifesting our cultural anxieties as monsters. Um, whether we're looking at like yeah, our, you know, immigration or disease or like you know nuclear radiation, like we find a way to kind of like work through our social anxieties by turning them into uh, you know to, into King Kong or into aliens or you know, to whatever it is, zombies. Uh, and so like, I was thinking, what are we scared of? Like what is the source of cultural anxiety? And I think I think the answer is women. <laughs> I think there's just so much kind of like, you know, not only like with the, the you know, the Me Too movement where we're actually talking about it, but a lot of stuff that isn't talked about related to that because people are like looking at their, their past behaviors and I think there are a lot of like men who, um, who are, you know, like looking back at like, you know, they're, they're 50 years old or whatever and they're looking, looking back on their lives and seeing maybe behavior that um, doesn't fit in today's model. And I'm really interested, like I'm fascinated by that, and um, that idea that um, somebody from your past could show up at any point with a story and uh, it, it could derail everything that you built, um, you know, perhaps totally appropriately. But I think that creates a sense of anxiety that permeates our, our culture right now. Um, and it, they're cats, and cats are awesome. So we wanted to definitely explore cats. So Leah is like, I mean, at first we didn't call it like, she, I didn't call her my co-creator. Um, we had like, what happened, we had all these, we kept going through different names. Yeah, her. I think it, there was one issue where I got like five or six like titles because we're trying to describe what it is that I do. <laughs> yeah, um, but she, like she does all of the um, kind of artistic direction and production and um, we, one of the things we tried to do in the comic is a lot of like re real world um, ephemera, so like in-world ads um, or posters, like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, the Time Magazine, like stuff that, you know, like isn't, it, it, remind, it, it kind of reminds you that it's a story um, that takes you out of the, um, the kind of cartoon, sort of animated look of it and feels more like real world in some way. Um, so we do, you know, like that, that sort of increases as we go. And then uh, Stella, who's there at the end in every issue, does a piece of art. So we always end, the last beat is always sort of Maude's point of view. So Maude is the 12-year-old you know, hero of the story. Um, and it's always a different animal. And it's always something that Stella has drawn. And sometimes when we commission her, we give her a specific animal, and sometimes she just brings her sketchbook over. And Leah and I go through it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, horoscope, the horoscope cats are my Cats? Horoscope cats? How is you? Yeah, like, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. 14 years old. Uh, and then Emily, in the middle here, um, is our um, haiku, a haikuist, <laughs> our haiku writer in residence with the comment. So um, many of the issues have haikus. Um, I've told her she's probably the only person who has that as a job, like 
Like, I'd be she's paid to write haikus. <laughs> <laughs> Do people ask you what is that? Um, What's I mean, a haiku? You mean? Yeah, no, because they're all in middle school, so no, you know, like <laughs> the only people in the world who like regularly write haikus anymore are middle schoolers. <laughs>
I've <laughs> done the research. <laughs> it is. It is interesting. It, uh, like the parasite, um, in order to complete its life cycle, has to, like it can only reproduce in the gut of a cat. But then it needs to get pooped out and consumed by another animal, usually a small rodent, right? Um, and then it has to get eaten by a cat, right, in order to then reproduce, like to complete its life cycle. The circle of life. Yeah. So it uh, uh, has this interesting, like, behavioral effect on the small rodents. It makes mice suddenly attracted to cats. Right? Because suddenly, like, whereas mice generally avoid cats, a mouse infected with toxoplasmosis is suddenly like, hey, hey, like, just, like, doesn't run away. And then what happens? It gets eaten. It gets eaten. And the toxoplasmosis is like, yes. <laughs> um, I've heard it be called, like, the zombie parasite. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's really absolutely. Cool. <laughs> no, it really is. And, like, there's a, there's a lot of different opinions and kind of, uh, controversy um, about the science of this because there, there was a big article in the Atlantic, like, you know, like very legitimate publication a couple of years ago about studies about toxoplasmosis and its effects on humans because like suddenly people, like not suddenly, but eventually like researchers are like, well, if this has this effect on mice, <laughs> huh, <laughs> like, I wonder if it has any kind of effect on humans. And they did some, a lot of research and a lot of very smart people are like, well, yes, it does. Um, so, like, I'm interested in the, the idea of, of um, how, like, that hey, this tiny little single cell organism can actually, like, affect behavior. I think that's just really interesting. So, in the universe of, of the book, it all makes sense how this has caused this mutation um, uh, so that uh, adolescent girls um, and, you know, women in general, but at this point, only adoles adolescent girls. Uh, when they have a surge of hormones at the onset of their periods, it causes this mutation um, into yeah, wear families, who are then very easily provoked and uh, hungry <laughs> and uh, grumpy. <laughs> Looking at you. <laughs> we also just really wanted like, we're so weird about periods in, in our culture, and uh, I think it's damaging, like, to girls to uh, feel like there's some kind of, like, there's something gross or shameful about it. And uh, I, I really wanted to, like, just make it fun and be able to talk about it and joke about it and uh, not make it this kind of, like, you know, precious or medicalized or, or you know, terrible thing. Um, So that was the goal. Yeah. It's it's a it's a funny, um, strange product. We're very proud of it. <laughs> and we like a lot. Um, oh, sweetie, do you have tissues? There's, There's some right there. there. All right, good. Yeah, we we put a tampon on the cover of the second one, just with iridescent around it. So that really took some of the. I don't know. It just like just put it out there, and you know, people will think what they will think about it. But it doesn't need to be this thing that is, you know, not not shown. Yeah, it, it was fun to just have that cover in in every comic book store, <laughs> on the wall next to everything else. Like that made me really happy. I like the in your face mess up. Uh huh. Like there's, it doesn't have to be. They don't need the little things they have at Winco for the Cosmopolitan magazine. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, you no, know, we have this little, um, like, up here, last we stand up and show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, we, um, Leah made this for me. It's a little, like, go ahead, Rusty, just like, it's a little cigarette girl tray. Yeah. That's her products. So, we have walked around, like, at Comic Cons, you yeah. know, with this. <laughs> but it's remarkable how many people are, like, Intrigued, but then also are like, yes, I would like to. Yeah, it's really that. great. It met, like, it's met with nothing but positive response. Like, people were like, that is so awesome. A few people just sort of like walk away. And, like, <laughs> like, I'll hand out like tampons to people at Comic Cons and they'll like look at me and just like walk away. Uh -huh. Which is kind of funny, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's good fun. Yeah. Uh, but also, we'll sometimes, um, 
I'm going to do a bad sign. Um, where's that? Black. Yeah, it's, it's back in there, but these are the ones we sign. The sign ones are yeah. there. Yeah, so you know, we'll open up a, a little pad. Oh, um, this is what's called a panty liner. I'm familiar with that. <laughs> but these are like on like your menstrual pads. Which we use as footprints. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> leading up to the stand. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone thinks it's an accident. They're like, yeah. are, are you <laughs> sure? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. So funny. Because they really do. Yeah, oh, like these are the ones. Yeah, open them out. Open one of those. Because mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable wasting these pads. Okay. Let's take them. We'll have to autograph them and stick them. Yeah. Well, that's what we use. So this we'll all sign with red things. marker. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Oh, okay. This is happening. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does, right, kind of look like a footprint. <laughs> <laughs> so especially, especially, when you do that, and then if you were to do them all the way around, say, like through a convention, oh, that's what I should have done with them all. <laughs> It's 
amazing. Um, so they, so like, this is, is an example of like what Leah does. Um, so like you know I I wrote this copy, and then um, you know Leah takes it and uh, looks at references for like the kind of magazine that we're kind of parodying, right. and um, she's right here. I am. <laughs> No, but and that, that's what's so funny is like there was so much um, of looking back at, at almost bad design because it was so iconic of certain eras and certain types of magazines and things like that. So, so yeah, so this is fun. But like we have done this whole thing with um, Astro Astro Corp. It has all of these different products, and so this is like the little um, sample of perfume you can get in a magazine that's just sort of stuck in there. And so, but it's oh. Oh. Much of the Astro Spice. Astro Spice. <laughs>
different thing, but like, uh, she was like, hey, I want you to draw some unicorns. Because unicorns symbolize female empowerment or something. Um, yeah. That's the one I was yeah. talking about with your work earlier. Um, so I spent like hours working on working on these lovely drawings. Not these ones. Other oh, lovely drawings. Well, that's just it. Like, so she, like, yeah, Stella brought her sketch, but like she'd been working on like drawing horses to get the like the have because I just wanted a single unicorn, and she'd been like working really hard to do it, and then she made the mistake of sharing that work with us. I showed up my sketches, and I'm like, oh, we like your sketches. Let's put them in a comic. I think it, <laughs> no, but like, the the remember, like, like that wasn't even your final one. I was like, oh, oh no. like I want to use. We had like we had beautifully rendered like finished ones, and then right the prototypes, <laughs> love all the <laughs> practice unicorns, which actually she was written on it. Like, will you read that? <laughs> I wrote, I swear I'm not a horse girl, Chelsea is making me draw these. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Just on her sketch work, I was like, that's going in. <laughs> but then when we were looking at that, you had drawn some houses yeah. just randomly in your sketchbook. Yeah, so. so most of it's just like random stuff that I happen to draw and then like kind of fits, which is kind of perfect if you're me and don't have a lot of time. Um, but then with uh, other issues such as like cat bite, I do more involved stuff like, um, they were like, draw a bunch of Zodiac cats. Uh, and I did it in like two days. Which is crazy, because they were, tw you know, there's 12. <laughs> <laughs> 13, debatably, apparently. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically it. There's nothing like mysterious. And you, you work, you know, like on paper with yeah. Copix generally? Yeah. Except for obviously these, and then I think the upcoming lion one, which nobody has seen yet, but um, I did it in like ink and watercolors. But no, mostly I use Copics because that's how I can get the best render that I can possibly, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can also finish sentences really well. <laughs> <laughs> point of view. That is something that uh, when we talk about diversity in comics, um, you know, we need more of, more like, like voice storytellers, which is like not, it's not only just, you know, like seeing characters represented, which is important, but actually like having creators um, who have different ways of moving through the world, like, you know, so that we're not just all like looking at one person, one type of person's way of moving through the world, as if that is the kind of standard end all be all. Um, and so, like, from a storytelling perspective, like, practically, you know, like, it's really, like, we were 14-year-old girls, we were 12-year-old girls, like, we were 13, we were 15. It's <laughs> 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 not all that. Um, but they are obviously way closer to that experience than we are. So having their involvement really, I think, um, I, I just gives a, the, the project some, um, authority yeah. that it wouldn't have otherwise. And um, I also like, really think a lot about point of view in terms of um, staying close to mods. So, like your classic kind of comic, comic book like Marvel style is very much um, written with this kind of like editorial voice. You know, like almost like literally, right? It would be like editor's note from Stan Lee. Like <laughs> um, you're, you're directed uh, as if this had happened. It's almost like reportage, right? There's a big establishing shot, and you see, you know, the like characters fighting in New York, and then it's like cut, cut to space, and you know, meanwhile this is happening, and uh, there's somebody directing what you're looking at all of the time, and showing it to you as if it were canon, as if it is what happened. And I really like the idea of looking at comics as a way to tell stories that are closer, in the sense that it's an unreliable narrator, like any story. You're telling somebody's story. And uh, you're telling like a version of events, and and staying close to mod like visually and narratively um, is something that we really like work on so hard. And one of the ways that we do that that's really important is, is always having that last beat that is Stella's work, so that we always have that interior that feels um, real and close, as opposed to. A, a visual sort of storytelling that like clearly isn't 
a, tw a you know, like a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, it's still like it's still self-aware that it is a story, it is a myth, and like having those beats where we we see something that is actually in Maud's head, that's actually close to her. Uh, I like I feel like it's essential. Like I don't think that this comic would work without those moments. So. It's really Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, um, no, they're all, like, I've stolen so many things from all of them. For <laughs> what? All right, at first I was being blamed for using that language, and then you flip it right <laughs> up. And, like, oh, and then Emily, um, like to the dead samurai haikus, and it is sort of the same thing where she made the mistake of mentioning to me that she had written some dead samurai haikus, and in fact she was pissed because she'd gotten like a B plus instead of an A on them, and uh, <laughs> and I was like dead samurai haikus, that sounds just brilliant. I would like to see them, and she sent them to me, and then I was totally like Leah. <laughs> Then you take this to your teacher and go, look, I think I'll be plus plus. Yes. <laughs> Have you published author? She pulled out the assignment and was like, well, you know, the requirement for the A, you didn't need that. You need to do nature drawing. And so. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, next week he's going to have me teach haiku writing to the seventh graders. Oh my god! Oh my god. It is such an example of like something that 
I could never write. Um, it was so like it was so age thirteen in the very best possible sense. <laughs> no, like in the, in the sense of like that feeling that you have. You know, like when you're in seventh or eighth grade, that desire for independence and the desire to, you know, for the safety of home and that, like, it, it's so perfect. Um, and yeah, like, I could never have assigned it. I could never have, like, all I could do is kind of give you the, the kind of space to, like, see what happens, right? And, you know, and you guys all, like, continue. And you too will get to you. Continue to, like, just, you know, they, like, just leave me gobsmacked. They sound me like for the way that they, you know, they get at this stuff. So, so wonderful. Um, and then, yeah, Liza has done poetry. She's written the poetry for us. Two poems now. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then uh, conversation with the 13 year old girls <laughs> in the. Yeah. Oh, I was, um, yeah. Okay. So I was uh, watching a TV show, and something happened in the TV show that was very. Um, uh, upsetting for me. I was like, no, this can't be happening in this show. And so I ranted to my friend about it. I was hanging out with her. And um, we were uh, on a train. Yeah. They and were they were mom, in two seats. And then Leah and I were in the two seats in front of them listening. And, <laughs> and my mom had said like there's a page like in Manny no <laughs> and, <laughs> and she said there's a page in Manny that you guys need to come up with something to fill. I was like, okay, we'll figure this out later. Let's procrastinate and just have fun. And then we were talking, and I was really, like, I was just sort of venting about what happened in the TV show, and then I decided to film it, um, or like record it on my phone, and then um, I wrote it uh, down later, and it was just us, like, talking about the TV show, and she had no idea what I was talking about, so I was just saying, like, this thing happened, and like, ah, it's just, it's just, it's just a lot of ranting to her friend yeah. about some plot or some it's really crazy, crazy TV time, show. Honestly. <laughs> and, and it was, yeah, her friend responding, like, super into it, even though, like, having no idea, like, having yeah. not seen the show, not really caring about the show. <laughs> was she, <laughs> but it's just, okay. it's just the way that these 13-year-olds, like, 14-year-olds talk. And like again, like it just captured this like uh, yeah. at least the way Eliza talks at her friends about TV about fandoms. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I was, you know, it, it was just so <laughs> funny and perfect. And so you know, we just gave that dialogue to cats, and uh, had another page done. Done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So that's how the magic gets made. Even or like trademark that. Otherwise, there's gonna be. People just yeah, be like dealing yeah. eavesdropping. <laughs> You're at 18. <laughs> 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 oh, <all right. laughs> mm -hmm. um, what do you guys like? Like, I, I want to ask like, what you think of it, but what, like, I also am not sure I want to ask. What you think. Like, I know you all really, like, I know you all really enjoy it. Um, but what is what is it that you like? the most, or that feels truest, or like what feels maybe farthest away? Like what are the things that like, you know, what, what do you like about it? Can I go first? Yeah. Um, I guess uh, something that's important to me for like anything that I read or listen to or watch um, or like experience in life is um, a balance between like all the genres, mm -hmm. like a balance between um, like humor, like is important, like authenticity and like authentic humor, mm -hmm. and also an interesting plot and interesting characters, and like even if something has an interesting plot and interesting characters and diversity and um, like drama and action and everything, if it doesn't have authentic humor, it doesn't. It's not good because then it's just boring. <laughs> But if some, and even if something is trying too hard to humor, then it's not very good either. But like that, like authentic humor. I guess I'm a little biased because you're my mom. Um, but <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, like if you were not my mom, I would still read the comic. Like genuinely, I love it. <laughs> I cannot express this enough. And um, uh, again, like um, I guess. Maybe because of me a little bit and <coughs> like all my friends and stuff. Like it just um, really gets inside the mind of a teenage girl. And I have a note because I live inside the mind of a teenage girl. <laughs> 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 um, 
I mean, I know you're really good at writing.
right, of, of young women and young men, like the, the, this whole generation, like they're going to be okay. Like, it makes me feel like the world is going to be okay because they they really are like the middle schoolers, middle schoolers, right? They should be terrible. <laughs> and you guys are so you're so just like you're just woke in the best way. <laughs> and I and I'm sorry to use that word like that, but like I really like I really do, I do think you guys are woke. <laughs>
comic book stores, and then these go to bookstores. Like that's the thing with volumes is that it, it's um, available at comic book stores, but also bookstores, which is the floppies aren't. So it's the first time that you break into the bookstore market, um, where like a lot of people uh, will find this comic who aren't maybe people who know that there's a comic for them in a comic book store, and maybe people who you know just don't interact with it. It just hasn't come in front of them yet, um, and so. We're still kind of figuring out, like we don't, we don't, I guess, encounter our audience because we're not, um, on like, um, in, in the kind of like book side, the, the, like my thriller life where um, there's a lot more interaction, just a lot more kind of like, you know, book events and library events and um, more interaction with readers so that I have, a, I have a much better sense of who my audience was, or at least this sort of self-selected group who would show up at, at things. and. Um, with this, like, it's kind of weird to do an event, right? Because we can't read from it. It's like, we, you know, we can talk, we talk to you guys, but there's not really a model for that. And we should definitely, like, read from it next time. I'm really <laughs> liking that idea, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm glad I can read it. Yeah. I'm just saying. No, I mean, like, reenact scenes. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Uh -huh. I'm seeing a play. <laughs> or a musical, obviously. Um, yes. I'm seeing a library opening in June. Seeing the enthusiasm was really fun. Like that was really neat. That was the first, you know, real sense, like yeah. real interaction we've had. The really big, yeah, the biggest one for sure. Yeah, but it's also, and it is really interesting. As one of you were saying, just like you see uh, the audience that it spans, which is really right. um, surprising. Like we knew part of the the goal was to get out of like the traditional comic book reader and to you know kind of include new people or people who were finding comics in that way, and it really is just like, and anyone you can imagine, the whole age range, the whole, you know, any demographic, and so that's been really satisfying. It was amazing how, like, there would be, like, this one, like, nine-year-old girl, right, came up, she had her little cat ears on, and she was clutching man eaters, and um, she wanted us to sign it, and her mom said that, like, she, uh, they'd done a story in, in the Seattle paper about um, about us, and, and she, like her daughter had, had you know, like see, seen that or seen a sign, like had known we were going to be at the convention, and asked, like wanted to come to the convention, like literally just to see us. And her mom was like, "Well, like it's like 34 bucks, you know, like I'm not taking you down to the convention center for like a day of this." And like, the, and her daughter went into her room, gathered up like all of her money. Like all of her, like yeah, like her Christmas money, like all this stuff, and she, and she brought it out, and she paid. Like she bought the day pass to come in, you know, which is like it was so it was so amazing, right? And there were a couple girls like that, where like uh, another girl that you know was introduced to us by her parents and was all kind of nervous, and as she was walking away, like her dad looked back at us and said, "You you know you changed her life, like that's you know like so that kind of stuff happens." But then there's also like all of these like. 40 year old white guys, or like 70, like just people like that you would not think that this would necessarily be like totally in their wheelhouse. And it totally, like, it totally was and is because it's a story, and you know, like we all like stories. Well, and, I, it's, and it's a story that like has so many layers. If you read it as a 13 year old girl who's just reading the story for you know what it is, but there's so many layers, of course, of like about society and about feminism and about just, and it's, and it's and funny, and it's, and it's, there are like, lots of the dads and, and, and daughters who, who came yeah. up to get the book signed, which I really thought that was pretty cool. really great, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can yeah, say so some, oh, sorry, no, okay. you go. <laughs> You're on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to restate what she said, it relates to a lot of people. I, so we've been having copies, so patrons here, and I can say I had, a, yeah, like a 70-year-old woman that I would not have who came up and I was telling her, and I was like, I've done a lot of like, yeah, just try it to people, because yeah, yeah. you you don't really know how people are going to react, but yeah, and then this woman who I had apparently missed, she was like, oh, I loved it, and then she was with her like, little like, sequin balloon sweatshirt with the kittens on it. And I mean, there's one of our regular patrons who experiences homelessness. Like, 
he's an older guy and he loved it too. And so I, yes, like I can I can tell you guys that just from the patrons here in the library, we've been getting people coming back to us and saying like, oh, that was so great. And it's yeah, we have our teams who are here, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just it it was surprising to me because it's also like. Here's this comic. It's really awesome. It's about menstruation. It's really awesome. Yeah. I mean, just like you, you wonder. You don't want it to be a big deal when you're like, no, no, no just, just wait. But like, just, it's so hard to know. Like, I, there's always a beat where I'll, you know, I'll be like, it's, it's about girls who turn into wear panthers when they get their periods. <laughs> yes. Right? And it really is. It's just like, yes. uh, and sometimes people like, that's awesome. And it's like, wow. Like, I would not have, you know. And sometimes people will be like, oh, and you don't. Okay. That's like, cool. usually it's that's awesome, but like. We bring so much to that. It is this, this like it hangs in the air for that like half second. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it's some. It's a subject that I think men and women of all ages can relate to. Mm -hmm. So they relate to all what's in the comic mm -hmm. and the stories and the, the young minds here that can put their their thoughts into it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that we can all relate to, especially women. You know, yeah. maybe men. You know. It sounds like men, you know, men bringing their young daughters to, you know, come to the comic, you know, to have you sign it. I mean, they're, you know, I, I just, that's awesome. It's just so great. It's really yeah. great. It is pretty great. And I think we can all, we can all, like, we all know that feeling of, you know, like, f questioning whether you're a monster. Right? Like, and even, like, you know, like, that's a strong way of saying it, but just, like, not feeling quite, like, you know, like, it's the experience, frankly, being in middle school. Like, you know, like, in the sense that your body's changing, like, you're becoming someone else, or, or there's a feeling that you are, like, of losing a person you were and becoming a person you've yet to meet. There's all this kind of transition, like, in so many ways in your life. Um, and there's so many ways that, you know, all of us experience that at different points. Um, that yeah, I just think the allegory is just so like rich to explore, and then it's also like it, it is very like cross genre, which I appreciate you know you mentioning, Eliza. Um, but I think it is a coming of age story and like a father daughter story mm -hmm. in a way that like that I think is so universal, right? I think one of my favorite scenes from the first volume was when she's eating Thai food and like you, it's the way, and the way it's set on the page is just this like whole block of thing and like as you're reading it to yourself in your head you can totally imagine like the just da -da 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 and then the dad just kind of being like and I think more people bring up that that scene it's amazing no it's really funny like that gets brought up uh, at least each day or you know when okay. it's like yeah yeah I like uh, the um, I think it's like the whole page dedicated to like all the um, house rules that the dad gives mod because it is so our house rules like every single <laughs> one every single one is like what my dad says to me like you know like we are a Marvel family like, don't Two scoops of ice cream. But everything is just so perfect. I love that. I'm not really that creative. <laughs> it turns out. I just know good material, and that is my gift. <laughs> Makes you wonder how to write the really suspect. <laughs> She's from Portland, who killed her husband. And they ended up catching her because they found in her web category something along the lines of like, eight ways to hide a body. And she's like, it's research for my novel. Oh, and they're like, oh it's no, actually, she, she did kill her husband. And she had the perfect cover because, yeah, but it ended up, it, it wasn't perfect. Yeah, you always use a tour browser. <laughs> But I, I, 
here, and I've talked a lot. Does anyone know? Okay. <laughs> and hearing you talk about kind of your experiences and just what you've done, it's I um, I can hear Maud's voice. Like I thought that Maud was such a fully developed character. Anyway, my son's sixteen, and he's really sassy, and that's like those were things. Like I very much got like no, like. It's not like somebody's idea of what a teenage girl could be. They're, they're whip smart and they're sarcastic and they're funny and then yeah, sometimes they're kind of irrational. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's, I'm saying it's a cool experience talking with you and then really seeing like yeah, this the character is so based on real life like and it's the authenticity that you were the authentic humor and the authentic character. Definitely. My, you know, my daughter is one who told me about Manny. Oh, cool. And she and her group are just wild about it. <laughs> and she told me about it. And Maude reminds me so much of my daughter when she was that age. I mean, it was just <laughs> picture perfect. And I'll tell you, this is, you guys, really, this, this is just tailor-made. Now, my daughter's not 13 anymore. But I remember distinctly, this is tailor-made for her and her group, and they relate to it so much. She's, she just turned 30 and, and has a, a daughter of her own, and they just love this. Thank just you. I'm so glad it. that you said just that. It's so great to so so And they would, she, when she was your age, I, I look at you guys and I think she would have given anything to be sitting right there. Because <laughs> she was just like you, very, very smart, very creative. Maybe not as creative as you guys, but, but, but she would have wanted to be there. <laughs> and, but this is really is great the way that I just think that that you know there's there's humor and truth and truth and humor and everything has been captured here. And it captures both the, the humor and the angst and all everything that goes with you know, just that coming of the age process. And I, 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 and that's why it was fun for me to read. It's just simply because it reminded me so much of so many of the elements of her and everything that she would go through. And she would be one moment, I mean, just make you roll on the floor, the floor laughing. And the next moment, you'd have to threaten to not let her go out trick or treating. And she would say, <laughs> one more word. You know? <laughs> so, you know, it's just, but it's great, and I, I, I really am just so impressed with, with all of you and the work you've done here, because it's really kind of transcended the genre, and it was, and it was really, I think, a brave thing. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think we should end on that. Then. <laughs> really, that was so great. Um, we, I did work a couple posters. If any, like we have these to give away if anybody mm -hmm. wants to take us. Oh shit! Well, yeah. we'll start. <laughs> My empty water bottle. Should be five yeah. seconds. Can I get you more water? No, it's okay. Yeah. 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 Library water. <laughs>
It's, it is like not a thing that they want to do. So that, that, well, that's why it's left out of the story, is because yeah. it's not on there, you know? I mean, I funny. it's a very yeah. friendly, friendly, friendly great, but like, I, it's just I'm all for people. that. It's just, uh, I can't. I think I can't. you might have to have maybe a rant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down, I've ranted about it several times. <laughs> I do, we have this uh, cutaway to, um, Right, instructions oh, for, can you show for how to put in a tampon. It's a kid's wand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Right, that, yeah. Oh which is like, <laughs> you, this is real. Okay, yeah. I just want to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember trying to which is, yeah, to, be, it to see if there was like to be a, twelve and like have to like look at that and puzzle out. Like it, well, yeah, it is really yeah. intimidating. <laughs> and of course, sex education. So oh, right, right. Well, then it's kind of weird. Your story's about a middle school girl, and but like the whole teen bliss for yeah. image, and then it's, it's like it's mature content, and it's like, well, you know, there's some nine year olds out there that know what's going on, so yeah, we've I believe me, <laughs> yeah. I had this conversation ad nauseum <laughs> with, with image, and their uh, their take on it is that um, they want to make sure it's 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 one, they're worried that like. That they want to make sure that it is uh, in in the like young adult or like more the adult side than in the, the kids section of comics, um, because they're worried less about offending kids and more about adults not being able to find it. Mm -hmm. sure. um, and and I think you know they're worried that like Barnes and Noble like with the volumes that. Because that's where I tried again. Like, it's not really Teen Plus. Like, come on. Like, it's, it's you know, like, what message? Isn't that kind of, like, mixed messaging? <laughs> um, and, uh, which is, like, it's supposed to, like, Teen Plus is, like, 17, you know, like, and up, which I don't think you need to be. Um, but they, they also say, like, nobody, you know, and I think this is true. If somebody reads comics, nobody really looks at that. Yeah. Um, I just want to talk about... Um, my friend Ava drew this dragon um, for the comic, and it's really good. Yeah, she's not here, but I just want to. But there are some really you guys are really talented. I'm just so impressed with your talent at such a young age. Plus, you're a good like talent scout. Like you have really good taste in friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, you have, I, you have how many middle school students do that here? <laughs> all of you to. Lucky, lucky to have these guys. And I, I did mention uh, we, we do pay them for their work. And my favorite thing is that, like our company that Leah and I have, is called uh, Ministry of Trouble. So they get checks <laughs> from the Ministry of Trouble. <laughs> like yeah, like I think all of your first jobs, right? Like in terms of getting a, like a paycheck, like a probably not you, Stella. <laughs>
paths you could take. And you never know where you might end up. Yeah. So Stella, I have a always. Bachelor of Science degree in art. And yeah. <laughs> so, Science art. Uh, right. <laughs> I had done so many science credits, and I was like, but no, I 